I got a call from uh, Dan Enright. He said, I'd like to have you come to my office in Manhattan, you know. I'm going to have you on the program. I told him that my wife was uh, out at the movies and I was babysitting and I uh, couldn't make it. And he came out to Forest Hills to my apartment. And I didn't live in this apartment, but I lived in one across the street from where I'm talking now. And uh, he came in with an attache case and he plumped and plucked. I asked him if he wanted a drink of soda or anything and he said no. He opened up this attache case and he started to ask me questions. I knew the answer to most of the questions and other questions I didn't know the answer to. He filled me in and then he leaned back on the couch and he said to me, how would you like to make $25,000? Just like that. And I immediately understood what he was saying to me, obviously, because he wasn't about to give me $25,000 for appearing on the program when I could have been easily defeated and gone off with nothing. So I understood what he was saying to me, and once I said, who wouldn't, I became part of the game show hoax. Uh, after I said, who wouldn't, he said, I, you're going to have you on the program tomorrow night, and he said, I'm going to fix you up with a wardrobe I want you to wear. He went to uh, my closet and he found an old suit which had belonged to my deceased father-in-law, which was a real, real baggy old suit, about two sizes too big, and uh, a, real, uh, a real grungy looking suit. And he says, this is the suit I want you to wear tomorrow. Then he went to my uh, drawer and he pulled out an old frayed blue and white shirt and he says this is the shirt you're going to wear. Then he went and found a very very terrible looking tie and said this is the tie you're going to wear. Then he said uh, have you got a watch, another watch, you know because I was wearing a quiet watch. So I went to the drawer and I had an old Timex watch that ticked like an alarm clock and this is the watch that he picked out and wanted me to wear because when I was on the program, the watch was close to the microphone and this was supposed to build up the suspense by having this loud watch ticking away. He told me all this. I mean, uh, it was pretty logical why he wanted me to wear it anyhow, in other words. Then he told me to get a marine type white wall haircut, a, a haircut where it went way up on the sides like this and in the back and um, the whole aim was uh, to make me into a nerd, a square, a human computer. I mean this is exactly what he was aiming at. In other words I was going to be presented as a nerd, in other words somebody who really didn't have a personality or anything, a one-dimensional character but I wanted them, I really needed and wanted the money and so I played along with him. He uh, kept uh, saying, make sure your wife uh, has the shirt ready for you tomorrow, you know, or uh, make sure uh, to, to keep your hair cut closely, you know, uh, the, this white wall haircut business, and uh, keep wearing the same suit. I didn't like it, but uh, obviously I went along with it. It was finally when the last show, when I knew I was going to lose, I put on a new single-breasted suit that made me look much better, of course, and Enright's reply to this is, you're not paying attention, you're not doing your lesson when he saw me with this other suit on. This was the last week when I, I knew I was going to lose. I wore it. I mean, it was, it was a fait accompli. It was nothing he could do about it, <laughs> but it made me feel good. <laughs>